Adobe has made some modest improvements to Illustrator on the iPad. They're not splashy new features, but a few things that can help your workflow. The first one is that the touch ring shortcut is now lockable, like you can do in Adobe Fresco. So I'm gonna double tap to unlock it and then double tap to lock it. Right now it's locked in the center position. If I tap again, I move to the outer position. So it's different than how you do it when it's unlocked where you go to the inner and then drag to the outer. So double tap, then single tap to change the stage and double tap to unlock. So let's see this in action. I'll double tap to lock it in the shift position and that means I can drag at a constrained 45 degree angle or straight up and down or sideways like that. If I tap again, I'm going to Option Alt. And when using the selection tool, this means you can drag out copies like this. If I do a marquee selection here, I can scale them all by the center and they maintain their proportion. When I tap and drag again, I'm making more copies. To unlock the touch shortcut, just double tap on it. Something else that's new about the touch shortcut is that when you move it into a new position, Illustrator will maintain that position for you even after you close this document or open a new document. So you can customize the position of your shortcut and it's not going to move until you move it again. Another useful improvement is that we can save and rename our documents just by tapping on the name at the top of the screen. And you can just go right here and tap save now. So let's make a change. I'll move some of these butterflies around and we can see the little asterisks next to the name, which lets me know that there are unsaved changes. Then I'll tap on the name and tap on save now. The asterisk is gone and my changes are saved. If I tap on the name again, I can come in here and change the name if I want to. So I'm just gonna add a two to the end and tap okay. If you have a keyboard paired, you can make some changes. Let's go ahead and I'll delete some of these butterflies, move them around. You can use the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control S, and this will save your file. Now let's talk about gradient snapping. So I'm zooming in here, and now what you can do is snap your gradients in 45 degree increments. So I've selected this shape. I'm going over to the color fill circle to open up the color panel and that allows me to see the gradient interface. Now I find it works best if you really zoom way in because it's hard to grab color stops here without adding new ones. So I'm just gonna start rotating and I've snapped to this horizontal. There's another 45, another 45. There it is again. So we can just kind of go all the way around the circle here, just snapping. And this allows me to make these nice, perfectly diagonal gradients like that. So let me come down to this shape here, get the gradient tool again, zoomed in. All right, let's see. I can just grab this yellow stop here. Now I can grab the other stop and put this at a 45 degree angle and it just snaps. So the top and bottom look the same. Let's go over here and do this one. So gradient snapping not only works on these linear gradients, but it also works on radial gradients. All right, I'll zoom out and let's look at the very last improvement. This one is probably gonna be very welcome for some people. I'm going to go ahead and draw with the pencil tool a squiggly line. You can see all the anchor points and I'll zoom in and get the direct selection tool. This is the tool that allows you to edit anchor points. And the improvement here is that when you select an anchor point in the past, you would tap and hold on it. If you held just a hair too long, it would actually delete that anchor point or remove it really. So that anchor point would be gone and the line would collapse and I'm sure that was really annoying. So you don't have to worry about tapping and holding on anchor points any longer. Now what I just did there was double tapping. So double tapping on an anchor point with the direct selection tool changes it from a smooth point to a corner point or vice versa. But you can tap and hold and you're not gonna lose any anchor points now. 
All right, so those are the improvements to Adobe Illustrator on the iPad. I hope you find them helpful. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you like, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more videos about Illustrator. My name is Laura Coyle. I teach Illustrator on the desktop and the iPad, and I thank you for watching.